Okay, so we want to start thinking in terms of creating the player. Okay, um, now we are going to write some code. We are going to end up having to change it as we develop to make sure that we have a good understanding of um, object-oriented programming, um, you know, inheriting different stuff. We are rapidly prototyping and we'll make changes as we go. Okay, I know I'm going to create a player, um, so I am going to go ahead and copy this script. And since I need for my game to run, my game's going to run on the sketch file. Since I need my game to run using the sketch file, I'm going to need my player to do it. So I'm going to paste an extra script one on top of the other one, and I'm just going to name this player, all lowercase, player. Okay. Now, uh, this is the name of the file I need to create. So I'm going to click the drop down for sketch files, create file, and paste that name, player.js. All of it needs to match exactly the same. I'm going to add that. Okay, so now here's my player file. Now I need to build it. Okay, so uh, simply so that we understand uh, class structure, um, when we create something in a class, we are basically cre creating like a template. Okay, so in here, this is where I would create um, generally, like, you know, hey, every player that I create is going to have these features. Okay, when we do that, uh, then I don't have to redo the code every time I want to create a new player. Um, I can just use the code that I already have here. This becomes my template. Okay, um, in order to create like this template, we need to do a class. And that means I'm using the keyword class. And then I'm going to type the name of my class. Generally, uh, whenever you're doing a class, you are going to use um, like a proper naming convention. So that means the first letter is capitalized because that's how we can easily recognize a class um, from you know everything else that's been written with camel case. So I write class, the name, and then I'm gonna write a set of squiggle brackets. And everything in here is the template for my player that I'm gonna create, okay? So, um, whenever a player is created, a constructor is called, um, and it has certain parameters that we can pass in that become a part of that player. So, you know, I could think of my player as having an X and a Y position, uh, maybe a color, um, all of that stuff. Um, there are maybe some certain default values or qualities that every player has, but there are some that are going to be specific to that player. So um, just so that we can kind of understand this concept, I'm going to go ahead and add one. We're going to have name as a parameter that needs to be um, passed in when we create a player. A player will have a name, just like you. When you were born, your parents, they gave you a name, you have a name. Okay, so then... When I am talking about the specific player that gets created, I am going to use the this keyword, this dot. Now, I'm not talking about just any player, I'm talking about this player. So when this player was created, it was given a name, and I'm going to store it as its own name. So I'm going to write it like this. Okay, This name, whatever was passed in, is going to be here, and we are storing that. Okay, We are storing that with... Uh, and this variable right there, okay? So that's what we're looking at. <clears throat> okay, so now once I do that, though, what am I going to do, you know, with that? Well, all this constructor is doing is when we create it, we're creating uh, the player with a name. That's all that we got. We don't have anything else right now. Um, so I need to give any methods or functions that would be used for... Um, this player to do something. So I like the player to do its own work. I like the player to choose to display itself instead of me having to write that code somewhere else. Okay, so it's better for us to write, say, some type of display function um, here where we give it the name of what we want and any type of parameters that need to be passed in, and then this is the code that gets executed. What gets executed? Well, um, let's say in this case, all I wanted to do is just console log the name that is stored for this player. Okay, 
I'm not saying which player yet because this is just a template. If I'm calling the player and calling that display function, I want it to display the name that we associated when we first created it. Okay, so this is my player. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and save and I'm going to go back to my sketch file. Okay, now if ever you're doing this and it keeps bouncing back with errors, um, it might be because you have the auto refresh turned on. Just shut that off. Okay, um, so in here, we need a variable to hold this. We're using the template, but we need a variable to hold what we actually create. So let's do uh, three players. Player one, player two, and player three. Okay. And my setup, I'm going to go ahead and, and create each one of those. So P1 is new. That's the keyword that I need to use when I'm calling a new class. New, right here. New, and then I'm typing the name that shows up in the class. Not the name here this okay um, and it's got to be case sensitive so new player and then I got to pass in any requirements if I don't pass in the requirements it's going to give me an error okay um, so what am I passing in I'm passing in a name so I'm going to do red beard that is my first player I can now copy this and uh, paste this for my other two player two is going to be Bob and Player three is going to be, I don't know, Morty. Okay, so now I've created those players. I run this. Nothing's happening. What's going on? Um, you might also end up getting this. You might get where it's saying the animation and the camera function has been changed. We're aware of that. Why is it doing it? It's doing it because uh, the play is actually overriding those. So... This is just a gentle warning. I don't really need to worry about it, okay? But it's going to show up. Um, so I don't see anything. It didn't display anything on the console about that. Um, I could double check in here, though. I could say uh, p1 uh, dot name. Let's see what we get. Dot name. There we go. Redbeard. p2 dot name. Bob and p3 dot name. Morty. Okay, they're there. They're stored in there in this program. But um, if we wanted to display them, actually physically display them inside of our draw, then I'm going to have to call it p1.display. Okay, if I do this, then it's going to throw it on the console code. So let's do that for p2 and p3. We should see each one of their names. Now, this is happening 60 times a second, so it's repeating many, many times, but Redbeard, Bob, and Morty, okay? We have successfully created a class. We have successfully implemented. We have reused that code multiple times. That makes things a lot easier, okay? Um, now, I can... I'm going to stop that. Um, I can do more stuff than just that, though. When I'm thinking in terms of a player, a player is going to have a lot more than just a name. There's probably going to be um, you know, a certain position that they're going to end up having. There's going to be uh, a number of things. So let's look at what we would need to create for a player. Well, if they're a dyna dynamic player, they're going to end up having uh, some type of position. So I'm going to create a vector, and this vector is going to end up having an X and a Y component that I am going to be passing in. So let's say I'm going to do that. I'm going to give it an X and a Y. That's what I want to pass in when I create it. Um, let's see what else. We would need you know, some type of velocity if they have it. Um, velocity is going to be create vector and they're starting off with no velocity um, what else do we need we need health this dot health we'll just default it to 100 um, what else uh, they might have you know inventory they might have a number of different things so we're just kind of building out what we would need now all of these things they're going to be part of that player okay right now for me to create this player class, it's got three requirements. It's got a name. Um, it's got an X and a Y position in my world of where I want to place them. So then when I come here, I can't just do red beard. I need to give it some position. So let's say width divided by two, height divided by two. And um, now what do, I, what do I want to do with this? Um, let's, let's, for right now, 
Um, we know that our player, when we are creating our player, is going to end up needing some things. Um, they're going to need um, some states. So let's do this dot current state. Um, and let's give it a value. Let's say they are standing. And we have a list of states that the player can be. And these states are standing, uh, moving, so they could be standing or moving, um, let's do, how about uh, pushing, attacking, let's see what else, um, uh, he's got a hit state, Let's do, it's got a dead state. Okay. Now, uh, standing, moving, pushing, attacking, hit, dead. Okay, now with these, um, any one of these, if he's standing or moving or attacking, he's probably, or pushing, he's probably facing a certain direction. So that may end up mattering. So let's do this dot current direction. And I'm going to use this in terms of angles um, being where if I have say a circle circle this is my player my player may be facing a specific way in this case they're going to face this way if that is my um, way that they're facing that's going to be zero okay if they're facing down because um, we're working our way around, then um, down is going to be my 90. Okay, so we're working our way around here. Oh, that doesn't, I don't like that. We're working our way around, so this would be right here. Uh, let's do light color and black. This would be... 90 right here. Okay, then 180, then 270. Okay, so using that, my current direction is going to be zero because that's how I'm going to start. But now I have a set of directions. Okay, um, so I can actually put that in. I could make those changes when we're facing certain ways. I could test for that. Okay, and we are going to ultimately end up having to put animations in here and stuff, but uh, for now, why don't we just do a color? This dot color, and it is going to be color. Um, let's just make them blue. Zero to fifty-five. Okay, there is my color. Now in my display, I don't really need to display the name. I have it. Um, let's look at his color. So we want to let's do. Uh, get used to doing push and pop for each thing. So push, I'm going to translate to my current position. So that'd be this.pause.x, this.pause.y. Um, and then my circle that I'm going to use to represent my, be drawn a very center position. And we'll give them a size of 25. Uh, what else do we need? We need the color. This dot color. There is my character. This is my display. I don't have to worry about what else to write for him. The display is just responsible for displaying. I'm not telling it to do other things. It's just doing the display. If you do that, it will ultimately make things much, much easier. Okay, so we have def display. We have created our player. Now let's go ahead and display them. There we go. Again, there are those two errors that we are aware of. I have not created a sprite. I have not done any of that stuff, but I have done enough where the player does exist. He's in my world. Okay, um, that's really where we should be going. Now, what could we do um, moving forward? Um, well, I can start actually taking keyboard inputs for my player to update my player. So my player has um, certain moves that he's going to do. And that's going to be, you know, taking um, 
whatever type of controls that I want to do. If we're thinking in terms of a game, um, then I need to actually think in terms of where the uh, like the types of controls that I want to do. If I want to use, say, arrow keys or the mouse, like that could be a control scheme that I'm passing in when I'm actually creating the player. Okay. So we're kind of thinking, you know, rudimentary, what is the mechanics that we would need to actually, you know, physically have this? I mean, right now I could, when I'm creating the player, um, I could give him, you know, a different coordinate. And then I run my code. Um, he's getting reset to a different start point, but I'm not actually physically moving him. Um, so that's something that I'm going to want to start implementing. I need to give him some types of updates based off of controls. Uh, for actually getting him to move to different places, to get him to face in different directions, and start passing um, values out to me, okay? So this is a good starting point for us. Make sure that you're always saving everything. Um, so next video that we go into, we're going to be adjusting the player more and more. Um, and doing it this way, class structure with templates, it makes it ultimately easier for us. What are we going to do down the road? Um, a lot of this player stuff is probably going to get abstracted out um, when we're thinking in terms of all the characters or players or actors in our scene in our game um, would all have stuff that they do. Like there's all a position of where they are moving. There's all a position of how they're being updated. There's all a position of you know what state they're in and if they're attacking and stuff. So a lot of that stuff can actually get abstracted out to something a little bit more general, like a dynamic creature instead of just the player. And then the player is the only one that has that control scheme for the user to use. And we have some other guy that's for the um, NPCs or the actual enemies. Okay, so good luck. Have fun.